I would like to now to ask Sharu Khan to join me on stage. I'm genuinely and deeply grateful for this honor. And it is indeed a privilege to be in the company of two phenomenal and extraordinary human beings and talent, Kate Blanchett and Sir Elton John. She is, of course, a lady who commands the wind. And you, sir, command the song of a billion hearts, including mine. So I'm really, really touched that I've been chosen between these two. <clears throat> Just a special request before you go, can I do a selfie? <laughs> now, there I've embarrassed my children. Actors are renowned narcissists. No matter how much we pretend not to believe in external beauty, we tend to be obsessed by it one way or another. And perhaps being surrounded by this obsession of beauty, a few years ago I came across a lady who had been brutalized by an acid attack. And it kind of changed my line, life, or the perspective of it at least. To disfigure a woman by throwing acid on her face is to me one of the basest crudest acts of subjugation imaginable. At the source of it lies the view that a woman does not have the right to assert her choice, to say no to the advances of a man or a group of people. And yet each of the women I met, I'd found within them the courage to move on with their lives and to reject the idea of victimhood. What struck me most about them was this that what was done to them only made them braver and stronger and more able to free themselves to make the choices everyone around them was telling them they could not make, couldn't make, or should not make. <clears throat> From them, I have learned how courage can catalyze victimhood into heroism, how solidarity rather than charity enables the human will to overcome how equality is not a concept, but a truth that encompasses all living beings, and how the service of others is not a choice of choice anymore for any of us. It is a duty that all of us must fulfill in the name of humankind. When I journey through the lives of these heroic women and children through the work of Mir Foundation, I experience a complete reversal of perspective. I stumbled upon the truth that there are no benefactors and no beneficiaries between living beings anymore. There is just a vast pool of resources, natural, spiritual, economically, technologically, that everyone is equally entitled to, but only some have gained more access to it, either by accident, as in my case, or by design and talent and hard work, as in the case of all of you present here. Standing here before all of you who constitute perhaps the most powerful group of human beings in the world, dare I say that power is one of these perspectives we like to maintain a certain way. But power actually needs a complete reversal more than any other thing in the world today. I was sitting with my five-year-old son, babysitting him just before I came here, and suddenly he screamed, Papa, Papa, my eye went into my hair. Can you get my eye out of my hair? He didn't say, get my hair out of my eye, like we all believe they do. It's a bit like that when you have power, I think. You think things get in its way, but actually it's the power that is getting in the way. It gets in the way of universal access to resources because it seeks to control and enclose them. So we, the powerful, need to get out of the way, I think to pick the barriers apart, the ones that give us names and races and colors and hierarchies. We need to get out of the way and into the work of breaking open access for each and everyone with the true sense of ourselves, not as more powerful or less privileged, but genuinely as equals. That is what I have learned from my beautifully scarred women. I'm grateful to these brave women and children who I work with for all that they have done for me to the World Economic Forum and all of you present here today 
for recognizing their heroism by conferring this award and this reward upon me. Also, I want to thank my sister and my wife and my little daughter for bringing me up well and teaching me the value of requesting, sometimes imploring, and if I may add, sometimes even begging a yes from a woman instead of forcing it upon her. Thank you so much, Professor Schwabs, for having me here. And thank you, Mr. Schwabs. Thank you, Davos. Namaskar and Jai Hind. Thank you.